Welcome to the Next Level Income Show, where it's our goal to take your income, investments, and your life to the next level. I'm your host, Chris Larson. You can get a free copy of our book at nextlevelincome.com. Just click on the book link. If you've ever considered getting into the pharmaceutical or medical device sales industry, or want to take the leap to your next level in the industry, you're not going to want to miss today's interview with Samuel Dienka Bedebo. On today's show, we have Samuel Dienka Badebo. Samuel is the founder of Evolve Your Success. He helps professionals and medical manufacturers reach their highest potential. As I said in the intro, if you're interested in getting into the pharmaceutical or medical device industry or taking your career in those industries to the next level, you're going to love this show. Today's show is sponsored by the Airbnb Kickstart course. My wife and I started our first Airbnb here in the last year, and we've come to love the ability to earn more money than we would if we had a long-term rental. If you're interested in starting your Airbnb business with little money, scaling your Airbnb business, or just learning tricks about the industry in general, check out our Airbnb course at nextlevelincome.com slash Airbnb. That's A I R the letters B and B, and you'll get a 20% discount code. Samuel, welcome to the show. Hey, how are we doing, Chris? I'm glad to be here. Oh, doing great. Doing great. It's Friday. I'm excited about the weekend. And right. I always I always love our conversations. So, you know, for anyone that hasn't had a chance to listen to your wonderful podcast uh, that hasn't, you know, hasn't seen your background, please share with the audience kind of where you are today and a short, a short history, how you got here. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, um, what you're talking about, you're talking about the medical sales podcast. Um, and that's all part of my business. I have a company, Evolver Success, and we help, you know, people in the medical sales profession. So we help professionals that want to get into the industry, uh, professionals that want to position within the industry. And then we help, you know, we help professionals that are working as a team and they want to do better. So anywhere CEO that maybe has a company that's a sales force of 20 to 100, um, we can work with them or we can work with individual sales professionals in the net or we can work with their managers. And uh, yeah, you know, we want people to perform very well in the sales role and we want people that aspire to be in those roles to be in. And um, we discovered this because I, I was a rep, right? And I started off in pharmaceutical and then went biotech. And I know that the sales rep role, if you're not careful, if you're not managing your career well, you can easily just kind of get lost in that role and, and get real stagnant and be, you know, 20, 30 years, you're in the same space, wondering why you're in the same space. But if you're careful to navigate from the beginning and you understand some things, even if you're trying to get in, then you can have a really bright career. And that's, that's what we want to help people do. No, I love it. And, you know, in our book, we talk about the make, keep and grow strategy. Right. And, you know, I, I think personally, you know, I, I had a, a real similar path, right? Which I think is why we enjoy kind of going back and forth so much. I started in pharmaceuticals myself, spent a couple of years and I chose sales because I think it is just the best career if you want, you know, earnings capability and flexibility. Uh, yeah. But I agree wholeheartedly. And this is why I wanted to have you on the show, Sam, was to kind of share, you know, some of your secrets, you know, what you do, yeah. um, you know, with Evolve Your Success and do that. But why, why did you choose sales? Right. So, you know, it's funny. I, I actually initially wanted to be a physician. Um, that was way back when I went to college. Uh, so I, I got into a biomed program with UC Riverside and it was a really astute program. I, I did pretty well in it. But as I started getting closer to the actual opportunity of becoming a physician and, and getting ready for med school, I started shadowing some and I came to the conclusion that, you know what, I love medicine, but I, I don't see myself in this hospital setting and working in this kind of space for the rest of my life. And, and I, I'm not sure I see myself in a patient-facing role on a consistent basis either. Uh, so I was working at a lab at the time, and the uh, the lead P, he was a scientist, and we were doing um, we were working on a molecule for a kidney function. And wow. I was talking to him about you know what, what my options were, and I've spent the last few years you know doing neuroscience and biochemistry and organic chemistry and all these things. What do I do with it? And he said, you know what? You should look into the business side of medicine and look into pharmaceutical sales. Um, 
This, uh, you have a great personality for it. You, you understand the science very easily, and you might you might find a career in that. So I literally applied to three companies right after that, and uh, one of them hired me, and and the rest is history. That's awesome. Yeah, it's uh, it, it, it's it's kind of amazing because I was in I was in biomechanical engineering, so kind of you know really similar. And I thought, you know, I was looking at the met, the, you know, the world of medicine back then, and this is actually before all this stuff has happened here recently. Sure. And I yeah. went through a similar process and I had no idea this world existed, you know, yeah. when it came to medical sales. Um, so talk a little bit about, uh, how, your pharmaceutical start, how you moved into biotech and kind of where you are now. Right. So, so, you know, I think the natural progression for pharmaceutical sales is either management or more sales, right? That's natural yeah. progression. Or just yeah. switching industries altogether and getting into something like medical device or genetics or, or biotechnology. Um, yeah. And, and that's that's kind of the track I followed. I knew I didn't want to be in management. I, I loved what I was doing. I love the interaction. And you're right, you know, when it comes to a sales position in, in medicine, I think it's the best combination of flexibility with your time great compensation, great benefits, and a bright future. Now you got you got to deliver, you got to be a performer to experience all of that, but I mean it, the the opportunity is there to experience that. And um and I knew that I didn't want to ascend the corporate ladder, so to speak, but I loved the the development that comes with helping people do so. But that's not even it. You know, I got to I got to get a little personal if you really want to know why I'm in this developmental space and why I eventually created a developing company called Evarva Success. Yeah. So back in you know, 2012, I was, I was married actually, and, and I was doing really well. I was performing, I think it was my, my uh, gosh, I wanna say my, I don't remember which year it was, but I had already come off of about three winter circles, so I was really well. Oh wow, I was, awesome. I was performing, I was like, okay, you know, this is great. And, um, and I actually, I experienced divorce. Mm. And and some people, you know, especially nowadays, it happens so often. It's kind of it's kind of some people look at it as just part of life. But for me, it wasn't right. For me, it was a big problem, and I tied getting divorced to like a failure in my identity, and and I really internalized it and literally affected my entire outlook on life. And I thought that you know, because I've experienced this, I'm I'm going nowhere. Like it's it's mm. it's over. You know, a real negative way of thinking. And it's because I, I always held myself such a high standard professionally and personally. So I started looking into, you know, how do people do this. How do people go through very intense personal experiences and continue to perform uh, with, with everything else they're doing? And, and also personally. And I found out about these, these development groups, right? And, and you, you've, you've heard of them. You know, Landmark, I think, is one of them that's pretty popular. Mm -hmm. um, there's some others out there. You know, Tony Robbins has a whole thing of, of, of courses you can take, things like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I found one of these groups, and I signed up, and, um, and it was, it was life-changing. I mean, not only did I get to rebuild myself and my abilities, but, you know, I started doing things that were much bigger and better than what I was doing previously. And after my experience with one of those organizations... I not only got a better position, I mean, it, it almost doubled what I was earning. Wow. I was able to move, I was able to handle my divorce you know, through all the details yeah. of that. And I literally just came out a completely different person on the other side. And that's when I said, you know what? I, I wanna dedicate my life to this kind of thing. Like this is, this is where it's at. Um, because I, I get to continue to stay in the space and stay in the work. And I get to continue to help other people just make their lives as big as they can possibly see. That, that's that's amazing in a lot of ways. I want to, and I want to, I want to talk about all of your success, but you, you said something that kind of brought it back a memory. And I remember talking to one of my managers, this was probably, oh, more than much more than five years ago. Not, not quite 10 though. And I told him I had a coach and I was, and he's like, well, I can be your coach. So it's interesting. You went outside of the company you were working in to find yeah developmental expertise and resources. Can you right. talk about why you did that versus just, cause I mean, a lot of these pharmaceutical companies, they have phenomenal training programs. I yeah. mean, we have, yeah. we have phenomenal training uh, yeah. within, you know, a lot of the medical device industry where I spent my time. Talk yeah. about the mind, like how you decided yeah, so to do that. Yeah. It's funny you say that. So, you know, I was actually in a developmental training program, for the company I was working for, and yeah. you know, it, it was a management training program. So they're, they're training you to become a manager. And, yeah. you know, they include some introspective work. 
but the kind of development that I got to experience with these groups was it was deep. I mean, I'm talking deep interactive work where you're not you're not just assessing how you can help lead other people and how you can set a better example, but you're assessing what you truly believe in person and how you align your identity and what you align your identity to. And when you're asking those those tough questions, you know, you're you're you have the opportunity to really sit with yourself and say, okay, what what is my life philosophy? And from what I've seen, I mean, you included, Chris, people that are really succeeding in things, taking life to a whole new level um, in, in, in any way you want to see it. You know, a lot of them are aligned. Whatever they believe in, they're, they're totally aligned to that belief. And I think that that gives them the freedom to focus enough on whatever it is they want to accomplish. Um, and, and I didn't need that type of that level of, of depth within an organization like like a pharmaceutical company. Um, I saw it in in these developmental organizations that literally focused on bringing that out of a person. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. And I was fortunate when I was with Medtronic to go through a terrific leadership development program, which was at least eighteen months long. And then the same thing sure. when I was with Nuvasive and ton of value. But you know, I see start with why on the back uh, yeah. on, on your yeah, desk yeah, there yeah, behind yeah, you. Right. And yeah, no, it's fantastic. And I it brings it brings to my memory Stephen. Um, Dean Graziosi has a book uh, and he talks about the seven levels of why and kind of getting down to really like why you're doing what you're doing. Right. And, you know, it, the thing is, as professionals, we focus on, you know, certain metrics and what our team has to do. But at the end of the day, I always believe that if you want your people to be successful, you got to know their why. You got to know why they're doing it, whether it's for their children, whether it's for, you know, even like the new new boat that they're buying, right? Like like right. something that they're going out there and doing. So um, I guess tell us why you developed Evolve Your Success, you know, what your mission is and, and what it's all about. Yeah, so so after I, I had this experience with the, with the developmental uh, organization, I wanted to get into that work. I said, you know, this is it. I, I want to be in work. And then I, so I started, so I actually said, okay, how can I do this on my own? Because I have the, the entrepreneurial bug, right? I always wanted to start my own yeah. thing. And I said, you know, how can I take what I've learned and fuse it with something that I want to start? And I started actually consulting sales reps. And so it wasn't just medical sales reps, it was any kind of sales rep. So people in the resort industry, real estate agents, um, food, the food industry, I mean, you name it, they were wow. just sales reps from everywhere. And I would just consult on just performing higher. Now I know that's the cliche, just, you know, high performance, it's a cliche word, but really what we were doing is how do you get numbers? So how do you yeah. get better sales numbers? And yeah. how do you appreciate what you're doing as, as a professional, right? Yeah. Which means we have to get a little per and, uh, Absolutely. I got some, I experienced some really interesting things. You know, some people, you know, we were able to go from, you know, middle of the pack performance, top 10% performance, but other people, you know, they actually decide, realize that they didn't even like what they were doing. And that's why performing and they had to, and we started entertaining where they would perform and they, they, they transitioned industries and now they're, they're killing it. While that was happening, I started to see that a lot of people wanted to get into medical sales. And, I'm, and I started seeing this need that, wow, you know, this, this career is getting harder and harder to get into. People, the, the secret's out, right? People are learning that they can find a career that allows them to to talk to doctors on a regular basis, you know, utilize their own brain and learn all this information about how science works and how medicines work and how devices work, and then be challenged to run the territory and make magic happen, right? Yeah. And that's, that's, I mean, when you really think about it, that's a beautiful gig. And a lot of people started to find out about it and now everybody wanted to do it. And I started to say, what, I wanna be a part of that. I wanna help people get into the space because I see these highly qualified people that just did not know communicate they didn't know what to yeah. show they didn't know what to do and, yeah. and and it was rough because i'm saying you'd be excellent at this but you, you you're you're literally can't because you don't know how to deliver yourself so that someone can believe that you'd be a great candidate um and that's what that where you know part of evolve Your success started and then we were already working with you know a few small teams and we're working all these different sales professionals so we said you know what let's let me take where my all my credibility is and all my experiences, which is medical manufacturing, right? And let me put it into that industry. Let me help people that want to get into this industry do the same. And and that's where the training started. And then the program opened up where we help people get in. 
uh, we got the ball rolling, you know, probably about the end of 2018 is when we started putting it all together um, after our experience with sales rep in 2016. And then by COVID, by the time COVID happened, we were rolling and then COVID just ramped everything up because we were already virtual. So, so you know, everybody was forced to become more virtual yeah. and we got a lot of exposure. People started utilizing the program and people were just experiencing success, both on the developmental side with teams and sales professionals and people getting positions. And then we, we went, you know, full force and that's where we are now. No, and I think you do a phenomenal job. I really, you know, I think back when I was trying to break into the industry and when people call me for advice and I said, listen, you got to be patient. It's going to take right. you a while. And now, now I feel fortunate. I have somebody to refer them to that has a process to help them out oh, and yeah. do this. I mean, yeah. You know, I, look, it, it's a tough, especially now, right? People have been displaced, yeah. you know, very competent people have been displaced. Uh, the best of the best from different industries want to get in. It's extremely competitive. And, and you know, now it, some people tell me they've been trying, you know, some of the people that we, the clients that we work with, they've been trying to get in for two to three years and it's not yeah. working. They work with us and, you know, three, three, three to six months later, they got the, the position of their dreams. And it's like, you know what? There's a science to this now. There, there's a way to present yourself. And, and it's about, you know, show these things to get the position. It's about learn how to show yourself the right way. And you're going to see all these opportunities right in front of your face. And that's what we're teaching. That's really what we're teaching people to do. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, I always tell people like, if you can't sell yourself, then you're not right. going to be able to sell a product. Right. And, and there is, there is a science to it. There's a way, there's a way about it and it doesn't have to be complicated. Right. So what I, what I love is that you talk about mindset, which you and I are huge on yep. systems yep. and communication. So yep. walk us through your methodology with Evolve Your Success. Yeah. So I'll be, you know, we, we have it broken up into three areas and you can kind of, you know, align those areas, what you just mentioned. The first thing we believe in is, you know, your personal brand. Uh, and, and that comes in, I guess you can kind of correlate that to the mindset too. Everyone has a brand, you know, and what we really believe in is, and what we found to work is when your brand is consistent with being a performer and someone that doesn't want to get into the position you want to get into, but someone that is ready to get into the position you're getting into, right? There's yeah. a big difference, right? Yeah. You, you can, you can, you know, you be, uh, a medical device sales rep that's selling implants and want to get deeper into med tech. And then you're going around telling everybody you want to get into med tech and, and you've already established a brand. Now, could that get you a position in med tech? Maybe if you know the right people and you've, you've really demonstrated a great work. Ethic. But imagine how much powerful your message would be if it wasn't about, oh, well, you know, that's Jack and he wants to get into med tech. And it was, man, Jack is so ready to get into med tech. You know, if an opportunity comes up, I know I want to plug Jack right away. And, and, and that's, that's a personal brand. So what we do is we help people create that on all facets. So you have your personal brand, what people say about you, but you also have a personal brand online. And let's go back to where we are mm. now. We're more vulnerable than ever. Way I mean, different, every, way different than 20 years ago. Yeah. Oh, come on. Way, way, way different than five years ago, way different mm. than three years ago. We're more virtual than ever. And things keep happening that are forcing us to get even more virtual. Yeah. So this whole online brand, what's your online brand? It used to be just something that, yeah, you have an online brand? No, yeah, maybe. Now it's, look, do you have an online brand? And if you don't, you're doing yourself a disservice. Half the business that's conducted today is done through, through an online platform like what we're doing right now. Why wouldn't exactly. you position yourself to be extremely yeah. relevant, power, ready for an opportunity? And, and to do that, you need a personal brand. So that's the first thing we do. We focus on your personal brand. Your, per, your personal profiles, LinkedIn is a huge part of that. Your resume. Uh, the different things anyone can see about you and who you are and who you say you are and what you believe you can do. Then after that, we go to foundational skills. So what we mean is, especially when it comes to job, getting getting a position and really making the case that you can do it, there are these foundational skills, you know, the basic things you need to understand, how to answer certain interview questions, how to understand how to how to communicate with a, with a, with a decision maker before the interview, how to understand how to enroll people to, to vouch for you when you're trying to go for that position. We consider all of those foundational skills and most people don't know them. Even experienced people, you know, if, if you're a performer and you've been doing your thing for six, seven, eight, ten 10 years, you haven't interviewed for a very long time. You, you've you've yeah. just been doing your job and you've been doing it well. But then when you're, when you're now put on the spot to make the 
for why you believe you should be in this position, you, you really don't know what to say. And you find yourself stumbling and mumbling and you're, you're just a mess. And you're wondering what's the connect here. And that's where these foundational skills come in. So we do personal branding, foundational skills. And then the last thing that people just don't understand is mastering the inner sequence. You know this very well, Chris. No job in the medical sales industry is a one interview thing. Yeah, I mean, if some people, if, they, if they've already been considered for the role and they've kind of been groomed to the role, one or two interviews will get them in there if they already work for the employer. But most companies, you're looking at a four, five, in some cases, six. I mean, I just heard of uh, a recent client that we that just joined us. They had nine. I mean, it's, it's getting ridiculous. Wow. It's yeah. getting ridiculous. And what we're, what we're seeing is that there's a sequence. There's a sequence here. And if you understand how to show up each stage of the interview, you can dramatically increase your chances of receiving an offer. That's awesome. Yeah. So branding, foundational skills, mastering the interviewing sequence. Yeah. And I think you're spot on. I think it's interesting. You know, you, you and I, you know, we have, we have a, a similar start, but we kind of come f- from it from different sides. Yeah. I always tell people, I'm like, man, if you could blend a pharmaceutical rep with a meta, with a good medical device rep, you're like, it's like a super salesperson. Sure. And may- maybe I'm a little biased, but I know a lot of pharmaceutical reps and people make this assumption that it's easy to sell. It, it's not, it's really hard to sell when you have a very short period of time. It's commoditized in a lot of ways. Right. Whereas the medical device side, you're so spoiled with time with the surgeon. Yeah. A lot of times you don't, you lose those foundational skills like you talk about. And yeah. if you go into an interview process where really you have to, you have to be concise, you don't have the ability to just, you know, pull, pull something tangible out and hand it to somebody. This is so critical. So yeah. if you're listening, whether you're in, on the pharmaceutical side or the med device side, and, and you're looking to make a step up I, to me, that's, that is such an important area right there. Right, right. This is so important. Exactly. Um, so let me, so, you know, I want, cause I want to also talk about the other side of what we do, but then I realized even before that I want to just highlight one more thing. So the way our program works is we actually have, you know, we have, we have everybody coming uh, in, within our program. So even alumni, people that have went through us, got the position, we have them come back because if you think about it, like you just said, personal branding, foundational skills, messing of your sequence, if you're, if you're someone that's after going for, uh, you know, some higher position or being second line leader or beyond in your career, you have to have those things dialed in at all times. And we don't train it so that, you know, it's a one and done. We are literally developing. We have speakers come in. We have hiring managers come in. We have experts around these different topics come in all within our program. So our alumni, they're still, everyone's still getting something as they stay in it. And that's, that's designed intentionally. And it creates this community within our program as well, because then, you know, alumni is one that wants to get in and there's, there's already a direct connection outside of the connections that we teach them and we expose them to when we train them on how to actually make these an activate network. So it's, it's, it's good for everyone, um, not just people that want to get in. It's good for people that want to get in. It's, people, it's good for people that are in and move their career forward. Now, when they go through our program, the next thing they have the option to go into is the sales training part of it. And that's where we work with teams and work with other companies, small and mid-size. And what we do that's a little different than a lot of sales training is, you know, going back to the development piece, I want to spend time on why is this person in this position? Why do they want this for their life? Why do they want this for the career? And what can they attain the future looking like? Because with everybody that we've worked with, you don't have to know exactly what you want to do in 10 years to be successful have a very strong direction of where you want to take things as you know the futurist you are Chris when you can be really clear about I want to I want to here the steps you take in between are so much more pointed and you can really get some traction yeah. no I think that's so important I mean every one of my clients that I work with the first thing we do is establish their three-year vision right. and you know it's if you know where you're going you're so much less likely to get pulled from side to side and again going back to your why like you got to have that strong why because listen if you're listening and you're like oh man i'd love to break into this industry let me you know I, samuel you can chime in here if you want but this is a, these are tough industries there's a reason they're yes. lucrative. It's because n- not everyone can do them. And even if you can do them, there's a lot of people that don't want to put the sacrifice in. Those are the facts. Those are the facts. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Yeah. So um, 
as you look into the future, so as you're saying, like this industry is changing, we're seeing things go more virtual, talking about how to break into it. But for somebody that's been an industry veteran now and, and has talks to so many people and sees so many different things, what do you think the real promising areas are going forward in these different industries? Promising areas is in what should people be anticipating getting into? Yeah, like, um, I mean, do you see like, uh, like I've been in orthopedics, you know, for, for 18 years. So orthopedics, diabetes, robotics, um, when it comes to, you know, biotech and those sorts of things, what do you think are the most exciting areas in our future? Yeah, you well, I mean, look, I like to divvy that up into the, the, the generality of the industry. So let's talk, let's talk medical devices. Okay. So if we're gonna talk medical devices, I think robotics is extremely exciting. Um, if you're someone out there and you're selling implants, I, w I wouldn't be surprised if you've been tinkering with the idea of moving towards more robotic space and doing something in that space, right? Because Absolutely. that's where the future is headed. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. You want to align yourself with that if you want to stay in that. You want to stay in a very lucrative, groundbreaking space. Um, what I want to bring into this conversation, though, is I want people to think beyond pharmaceutical or medical devices. And this is part of the reason I also created the Medical Sales Podcast. There's a lot of industries to consider that people just don't know about, like genetic testing, for example. That's another growing, hyper exciting, hyper exciting space I agree. That, that might not even be demanding of some medical device roles, but compensates extremely well. And, and, if you, and if you're great with people and you're great with the science, I mean, really, you can really have an, a, a very exciting career. And you can and you can climb right up the ladder if that's your ambition as well yeah. and then also i would i would challenge people to think about other types of sales like molecular sales you know this is like lab testing that's not talked about a lot people don't know what that yeah. is people are like what, what, what's lab testing again another very you know high compensating role where you're dealing with the opportunity to really develop some amazing relationships that will help you in business and allow you to thrive and, and again, the management track, if that's what you want, like if you want to run one of those types of companies one day, it's open for the taking. And this is, this is what I like to encourage people to, to really understand. You know, if you want to get into sales in metal, medical manufacturing anyway, be open to it all. Really, really be open to it all. Indeed. And, and think about where do your interests lie? If you love being in the hospital, if you want to be able to get into scrubs and get your hands dirty with with a provider, then you know what? Something in medical devices really makes sense. It's really make, it really makes sense to explore. However, you might not love that. You might still love the science, and you might want you might want to just wait in account offices and sell drugs either as a pharmaceutical sales rep. It doesn't mean that you have no options. There's a whole world of of like I said, genesting out there that you you might really really enjoy, and wow. and that's. That's something that we try to do is educate people on all the different industries you can get into. And, and, and honestly, Chris, it's less about what's the hottest thing and it's more about what's best aligned how you want to lead your life. That's the best fit. I, I think that's perfect. And, you know, I talk to a lot of people, they want to get into orthopedic sales because they hear it's lucrative. And I, I, always, I always say, well, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? You have to think right. about what you enjoy. It's like a right. sport, right? You may be good at a sport, but you might not like it, but right. that doesn't mean you can't be good. Another one, my personal story, my dream job was selling orthopedic implants, hips, knees, shoulders. Right. After a year, I got called and introduced to the spine industry, specifically mm -hmm. biologics. Right. And I was like, well, that's not really in my mind what I thought, but I, I started to learn about it. And I was like, wow, what, what a complex industry that has all this in front of it. And it, it, it turned into just a wonderful career with a lot of wonderful friends, a very challenging environment. So I think that may be the most important thing, you know, that I've heard you say today, which is, you know, think about really what you enjoy, what you're good at, but then right. be open to what's out there and consult with somebody like Samuel that can give you some of this perspective. Right. Um, so Samuel, we've talked a lot about, you know, the industry and how to be successful, what you got, what you do. Um, I'd love to hear how, how do you balance all this? You still have, you have a, fantastically successful career. You have this business that's been growing over the past few years. You have a family. How do you balance it all? What are your secrets? Yeah, you know, uh, just be open to learning how to better balance it. That's the secret. <laughs> the secret <laughs> is don't ever stop learning. Um, you know, that's I a am, a, there's so many philosophies out there about how we should be conducting our daily lives. I think one of the things that has worked with me really well 
is is understanding that that a lot of life is about conditioning. You know what what you condition yourself to do on a regular basis is really going to produce a lot of the results that you experience. If you condition yourself to go to bed at a decent time so you could always wait at a decent time and if you condition yourself to take in new information and, and dedicate time to learning something new every single day, then that's going to that's going to bear fruit. If you condition yourself to to not doing any of that and just kind of fly by night seeing what what your day brings, that's also going to produce fruit. So the best thing to say around you know how I do it is I, I try to find the best ways to maximize my conditioning uh, and the things that I like I said I go to bed I try to go to bed at the same time every night I try to get Good up one. early every single day and you know we don't have to do 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. but consistency is powerful absolutely and and if you can develop great habits around when you sleep when you wake and then what your day should look like. We talked about this before, Chris. You know, you're a big yeah. fan of planning your entire week well ahead of schedule. I, I 100%. I think if I didn't plan the majority of my year ahead of schedule, a lot of things that I'm able to accomplish just wouldn't happen. And, I, and that all comes with conditioning. So I think people should really be aware of their conditioning and always be thinking, in this moment, is what I'm doing something that's aligned to who I want to be? And is what I'm doing going to benefit the kind of results I want to create. And if you find yourself saying no, 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 and no, you know what you need to do. Yeah, no, it, it is. And it's hard to be honest with yourself. It's hard to look in the mirror um, and do that. So I ask everybody this question. Yeah. So if you had to go back to your 25 year old self yeah. and he was looking in the mirror and you were looking back, what, what advice would you give him? Oh man, you know, you know what I'll tell myself, honestly, I would say you need to give yourself some grace. Set your goals, whatever you're trying to accomplish, and as you go after it, give yourself some grace. I think I think that's that's the, the if I can look back and think what didn't I do a really good job of? I didn't give myself grace. And I think what hmm. we can at least what I fell victim to is I would beat myself up about, you know, certain things. And sometimes it would be warranted for development, but a lot of times it was not. And it was yeah. counterproductive. Uh, because when you beat yourself up, you know, you tend to get in this, you're not really proactively going after things and yeah. your creative, innovative mind is kind of off and you're, you're, you're working in survival mode and yep. that does not bear a lot of fruit compared to being in this thriving mentality and you're ready to just tackle the day and conquer your day. So I think giving yourself grace is, is critical. Uh, and that's definitely something I would tell myself if I can go back 25 years. I love it. So you talked about habits, building success, and then taking something that's a little more qualitative and talking about, you know, being, being forgiven when you have to get up and, and get beat down. And sometimes, you know, it's okay. And that's the process that life yeah, goes in. You know, yeah. look, we have the time, the cliche, I think it's even cliche now, fail, fail fast and fail often. Yeah. And, and I think you, you can get really good at that and, and be, and, and progress really well if you're giving yourself grace as that's happening. Yeah, that's that's terrific advice. It really is. So, Samuel, you've, like I said, man, you've given so much good advice here today. Um, if people are listening, they want to get a hold of you. They want to learn more about the programs that you have at Evolve Your Success, or maybe even work with you one on one personally. What is the best way for them to get a hold of you and learn more about what you do? Yeah, they can go to evolveyoursuccess.com and find me on LinkedIn. Just type in Samuel Adeyinka. I'll pop right up, and they can just send me a, a direct message. Or they can email me at sam at evolveyoursuccess.com. Excellent. We're going to have all that in the show notes, Samuel. Make sure that it's going to be easy. For anybody listening today that wants to learn more to get a hold of you, really appreciate you sharing so much value with our audience today. And it's always a pleasure to speak to you. Definitely. Thanks for having me. Hey, Chris here again. I hope you found this episode valuable. Now I have one more gift for you. If you haven't gotten my book, Next Level Income yet, and would like me to send it to you in the mail for free, then go to nextlevelincome.com and click on the book tab. If you fill out the form on that page, I will send you a copy of my book and cover all the shipping costs as a thank you for being a podcast listener. Also, please like, share, and take 90 seconds to give us a rating on Apple Podcasts.